In this series, I'm going to document my journey creating a real world Quasar framework app from scratch, an app that will ultimately be deployed to the iOS, Android, Mac and Windows app stores. And so in each episode of this series, I'm going to give you a progress report of where I'm up to. I'm going to talk about what I've learned, talk about any problems I've encountered, show you any interesting code and explain it and also let you know what I'm going to do next. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you're interested in this kind of series. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the videos in this series. And I'll also put a link to the whole playlist in the description. So the app I'm going to be creating is called Fudget 2 and it's the sequel to my popular cross-platform app Fudget which is available for iOS, Android, Mac and Windows. And so for years, I've been receiving feature requests from my Fudget users, and I've been storing them all in this spreadsheet, and keeping a count of each feature and how many times each feature has been requested. And this has enabled me to know exactly which features are most in demand. And for a long time, I was adding a lot of the most in demand features to the app, but because of some of the old tech that Fudget is using, as in jQuery and WebSQL, the code became such a mess and I reached a point where I just couldn't add any more features anymore. So if you take a look at a couple of the main JavaScript files from the original Fudget, this one here is just an endless JavaScript file with around over 5,000 lines of code. And then we have this other one, which has about 4,000 lines of code and it just became unmanageable. And also the fact that I have separate code bases for the mobile version and the desktop version has caused a ton of problems as well. And since we now have the amazing Quasar framework, which allows us to cover all of these different platforms with a single code base, I decided to recreate the app from scratch using Quasar with all of the new features that Fudget users are asking for. So ultimately I'll be deploying this app to iOS, Android, Mac and Windows and possibly a web-based PWA version as well. And the main thing that I'm gonna be doing differently this time, as well as adding all of these new features, is that I'm gonna use the subscription model this time. So Fudget One just has a one-time in-app purchase, which unlocks a number of different features. But with Fudget Two, I'm gonna use the subscription model. So the app will be free to download on all the different platforms, but then the user can sign up to a Fudget Plus account and have live data sync across all of their devices and a load of other features as well. So a quick progress report of where I am so far. So basically I've designed the entire app. I've designed all the main screens and pop-ups from all the main sections in the app for mobile. So I've designed around 35 screens here. And this has taken a really long time. And I've also designed a couple of the screens for desktop as well. Well, I'm not gonna design every single screen for desktop because most of it's gonna be the same as the mobile version. And so we have four different sections in the app. We have a budget section, a starred section, a setting section, and an account section. And I've basically designed all the main pages and pop-ups from each of these sections. And design-wise, I've tried to give it a more modern, kind of flat and clean look than the first version of the app. And I've also tried to add a bit more color to it and make it a little bit less orange. Because in Fudget One, basically everything is orange. So the header's orange, the footer's orange, the background is orange, all of the buttons are orange, and it was a little bit orange overload. So in this version of the app, I've got some blues in there, got a nice beige background instead of an orange background. Uh, we've also got some greens and reds in there. And the way I've found a lot of these colors is by using the Adobe color tool. So if I just grab the color code for this orange, which is my main kind of color, and if we just search for Adobe color, and I'll jump to color.adobe.com and I'll paste that color code into this middle field here. Then we can use this tool to find colors which will match this color. So for example, if we go to complementary, we'll see some colors which complement this orange color, such as this blue color, which is the blue color that I've used in these buttons. And I've also redesigned the icon for the app as well. And this is the original icon from Fudget One. And you can see I've been through a number of different variations here. So on this one, I tried to do like a coin style design, a sort of semi-realistic coin, and that just didn't work at all. And then I tried to do a kind of inverse design from the original icon, where we have a white background and an orange outline instead of a white outline with an orange background. And this looks kind of nice here, but when I put it on a device, it just didn't look good at all. And that's one thing I'd recommend you do when you're designing your icon 
create a quick Quasar project, uh, use the Icon Genie tool to just quickly see how your icon will look on a real device as you're iterating. Because a lot of the time you find it looks good on your screen, but then you get it on a device and it just doesn't look good at all. And so then I've done a few iterations that are similar to the original icon. And in the end, I've settled on this one, which is just a really minimal flat version of the original icon. And if you're enjoying this video, please do me a favor and smash the like button. So there's a couple of things that I've learned so far. Uh, number one is always design your app before you get started. So I don't really enjoy design that much. and I'm not the best designer in the world, but I can make things look pretty decent. But I decided it would be a great idea to just start coding Fudge It without any design. And you can see this version of the app running in the browser here. But I ended up hitting a number of different brick walls and had to just scrap the whole thing. So for example, in Fudge It 2, I needed a way to display extra fields beyond this title and amount field. And so I decided this little more button would be a good idea, which when you click on it, it shows those extra fields. But then I realized this wasn't going to work for a number of different reasons. And also, I just don't think it looks that good. So if you're creating your own app, I would strongly recommend that you design every major page, screen, pop up from your app before you get started coding, or at least wireframe every major page using something like Balsamic. And I know it's a major pain, but it's definitely worth it for a number of reasons. Number one, as you're designing, you realize that certain things aren't going to work the way that you anticipated. And you realize that certain things need to be moved around. And although it's a pain to make these changes at the design stage, it's a lot less painful than trying to make these changes at the development stage. And number two, once you have the whole thing designed, it's much easier to envisage how you're actually going to build the app and what order you should do things in and it becomes much easier to put together a development plan. And number three, it's much more fun developing an app which actually looks good while you're developing it because the fact that it looks good helps to keep you motivated and it helps you to envisage how the finished app will look. And the second thing I've learned so far, which is just unbelievably handy, is that you can actually create a prototype using Sketch. So you can, for example, click on a button on one of your artboards and then use this prototyping section over here to link that button to another artboard. Or you can draw a hotspot on the page and link that to another artboard. And by using this method, you can create an entire prototype of your app. And I've also found that you can do the same thing in Figma as well, which is a free online design tool. And when you create an account with Figma, you actually get this prototyping in Figma example which shows you how to get started with that. And it gives you an example prototype, which you can click around in and stuff like that. And so I've done the same thing in Sketch. So if I click on this splash screen and then press Command and P, then it'll launch this little prototype. And because I've linked up all of the buttons and artboards, we can click around the whole app. So after the splash screen, we see an empty budgets page with a little tool tip telling the user what to do. So there's gonna be a number of these tool tips the first time the user runs the app, just to help them get started. Then if we click on this add budget button, we get this pop-up where we can add a name for the budget and set the currency symbol. And we have a couple more tool tips. And when we click on create, we've actually created our first budget. Then we can tap on that to open the budget. And you can do some basic little animations with this prototype thing as well. So then we have this empty budget screen where we can add income and expense items. And we have a few more tool tips here. And then we can see what the entries page looks like with some items on it. And if we click on this title field, we can see what the auto complete is gonna look like. And if we click on the amount field, we can see this calculator pop up and numeric keypad. Because one of the most requested features was a numeric keypad for entering the amount. Because right now in Fudget One, it just pops up the default keyboard. And I thought since I'm doing this, I might as well also add some calculator buttons as well so that users can do quick calculations. And if we click on this button next to one of our entries, we can see extra fields such as notes, date, a reminder field, and partial payments, and options to star an item, which will add it to this starred section. And starred items are basically items that can be repeated from budget to budget usually month to month. And we can also copy and move an entry or delete it. And if we click on this button up here, we can get options for the entries page with a bunch of different options. So we can do a multiple selection where we can star a bunch of items or mark a bunch of items as paid or copy or move a bunch of items or delete a bunch of items. 
and we could also add a carryover where we can basically add the final balance of a previous budget to the start of this budget which is really handy for monthly budgeting and stuff like that then we have a charts page which will give us a nice visual breakdown of all of our expenses or all of our income items and i'll probably use a quasar table for this bit down here and we can also show a search bar and a filter bar for searching and filtering our entries and we can also show a running balance and a date column as well so that's basically all of the screens from the budgets section and I'll jump to the start section. So items that we add here can be automatically added to new budgets that we create. But design wise, this is basically the same as the uh, entries page that we see here. Then we have a settings page with a bunch of different settings. And one of the cool things with this prototype thing is that you can fix elements in place. So I've fixed the header in place and the footer in place and we can actually scroll down our artboard like this, which is pretty cool. And I didn't actually design all of this page because I realized it would take me ages to design all of these check boxes and radio boxes and stuff like that. So for the settings page, what I did was actually just create a Quasar project and build all of these items on this settings page. And then I just took a screenshot of it using the awesome screenshot plugin for Chrome and then just pasted the screenshot into my sketch design. And then finally we have the account section where the user can log into their Fudget Plus subscription account, where they can have live data sync across their devices and all that good stuff. And if they don't have a subscription, they can click on this button to learn a bit more about what you get with Fudget Plus. And I'm also giving them an annual option and a monthly option with either a 14 day free trial or a seven day free trial. And if they subscribe to one of these, then they'll be asked to create an account with an email and password. And once they're registered, they'll be signed in and they'll now have live data sync across all their devices and a number of other extra features as well. So this prototype thing has really helped me out a lot. It's made me realize certain things which I thought were intuitive at the design stage weren't as intuitive as I thought once I'd launched it in this prototype thing and started clicking around it. So I'd highly recommend you create some kind of prototype like this, either using Sketch or Figma or Balsamic or something like that before you get started creating your app, because you really learn a lot from it. So here's what I'm gonna do next. So I've basically finished the design, but there's a few little tweaks that I wanna make. And once I've made those tweaks, I'm gonna start with the Quasar project. And I'm gonna use Quasar version two, which is currently in beta, because Quasar version two uses Vue 3. And I wanna use Vue 3, especially the composition API, or state management, a bit like I did in my composition API for state management video. And I would rather use Vuex5 for state management because Vuex5 is gonna get rid of mutations and instead just have actions which are asynchronous and which can mutate the state, which means we can get rid of tons of setter mutations and really simplify our state files. However, I've no idea when Vuex5 is gonna be released, but maybe when it is released, I can convert my composition API state management over to Vuex5, if it's not too difficult. And the way I generally do my projects is get all of the design done and then get all of the front end done and then get all of the back end done. So to begin with, I'm just gonna work on the front end of the app and get all of the layout working. And the layout is gonna be quite tricky because on mobile, this looks like a fairly standard kind of Quasar app. But if we look at the desktop design, and we look at the budgets section of the app. On desktop, I'm actually showing the list of budgets and the list of entries for that budget on the screen at the same time. So when we click on a budget over here, it will actually load that budget in this section. Whereas on the mobile version, we display the budgets on one screen and then click on a budget and then we load that budget on another screen. So figuring out how to handle this layout is gonna be an interesting challenge. I think what I'm gonna to have to do, instead of having a page for budgets and a page for entries, is not have individual pages for these, but just have view components which look like pages for each of these. And then on the desktop version, display both of these components on the page at once. And then when the user clicks on a budget, update this component over here. Whereas on mobile, when the user clicks on a budget, I'm gonna to have to load this entries component over the top of it so that it looks like a new page. But anyway, once I've figured out how I'm gonna handle this responsive layout, I'm just gonna do all of the front end for all of the different pages. Basically just make sure we can see every page running in the app and looking like the design. But at this point, I'm gonna avoid using data and logic as much as possible. 
I might just have some simple data just for showing and hiding things. But as much as possible, I'm gonna avoid using data and logic. And only once I've got every screen looking nice in the app will I start working on the real guts of the app and adding all of the data and logic and figuring out how I'm gonna manage all of the data. So for free users of the app, I'm just gonna use local base to store their data on their device in an IndexedDB database. But then when a user subscribes to a Fudget Plus account, I'm gonna move all of that data to Firebase, to a Cloud Firestore database, so that they can have live data sync across devices, which is one of the most requested features because I have a lot of couples which use this app who want to share the same data. And what they really want is if one of them adds a new item, they want the other person to see that item appear instantly, which is the main reason I'm gonna be using Firebase because it has that option for live data sync across devices. And so I'll probably get the app working with Firebase first. Uh, once everything is working with Firebase, I'll then figure out how to get it all working locally with local base for free users. Because I think getting Firebase working optimally is critical. I wanna make sure I structure and access the database in a way that we only need to access the database when it's absolutely necessary and that we only ever grab the data that's absolutely necessary to make the app more maintainable and also to minimize charges that I get from Firebase. So I think it's better to use the way that I'm storing data on Firebase to inform the way that I'm storing data locally using local base than to use the way I'm storing data locally to inform the way I'm storing data on Firebase. Uh, let me know, do you think I should be using Firebase for this project? Or do you know of a better solution that's cheaper, which also allows live data sync across devices? If so, let me know in the comments. And also let me know if there's anything else that you think I should be doing differently in this project. And if you wanna learn more about Quasar, I have tons of videos on this channel. And please check out my Quasar courses as well at dannys.link slash courses. And make sure you hover my face over there and click subscribe. Every subscription helps me to create more content for this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.